Guys, we are in week three of our series, Ready to Launch, and I don't know about you guys, but I am enjoying the apple picking, the pumpkin looking, the PSLs, pumpkin spice lattes, if you know what I mean. I am enjoying fall. I'm loving my comfy sweaters. Oh, it's so fun. And I've been enjoying our series talking all about initiative. We've been talking about knowing what needs to be done and, and doing it, right? Seeing what needs to be done and doing it. And it's been really awesome because we've been actually talking about this guy named Nehemiah. Now, if you got that right, Give yourself two thumbs up because that was awesome. We learned the first week about how Nia and Maya took initiative to do what needed to be done in his home city. And then we learned in week two, Nehemiah standing up for other people that couldn't necessarily stand up for themselves. And as always, we have another really cool story about Nehemiah and how he continued to take initiative in his story about rebuilding this city and I'm so excited to get that started. But before we do that, we have been working on this Bible memory verse for three weeks now. Well, two weeks, this will be the third week and I think we might be able to do it. Yeah, do you guys think you might be able to do it? I've been working on it a little bit. So let's see if we can do it together. I think we got this. Okay, so it's Colossians 3.23. Did I get that right? Yeah. Colossians 3.23. And it says, work at everything you do with all your heart. Right? I remember that because all your heart. Work as if you're working for the Lord. That's right. Work as if you're working for the Lord. So let's say it together. Colossians 3.23 says, work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you're working for the Lord. Whew, that was close. I think we got it. We have one more week. Miss Melissa is going to go through it with us next week. So whew, we got one more week to get this down. You think we can do it? I think you guys got it. You're super smart. So all week you guys can work on that. And remember, always take your Bibles out so that we can learn more and read from God's truth. Okay. We got all of it. We're rocking it. We're killing it. We have a game that we're going to play before I come back and talk to you at that lesson. So the game is called, as it's my favorite, because we love to watch people fall on their face or do awesome tricks or fall on their butt. Let's be real. It's kind of funny. So we're going to play face booty awesome. And we're going to see if these guys can land some amazing tricks and how cool they are. Let's watch it. Let's play. And then I'll see you after the lesson. An amazing story inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 2, 4, and 6. When Nehemiah traveled to Jerusalem and surveyed the broken down walls, he saw immediately what had to be done. We must rebuild. God moved the hearts of the people to join him. Let's get started. But while the Jewish people were eager to repair the tumbled down walls and ruined gates, the people in the lands around them were not so thrilled. Uh, what do they think they're doing? A city with no walls stood open to attack. The people inside could never become a strong nation. The enemies of the Jews knew that if the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the Jewish people might become a powerful enemy. They must cease and desist. Sanballat, a Horonite, and Tobiah, an official from Ammon, marched right up to the place where the people gathered to begin work. 
pathetic. What a ragtag group. Why bother to even start? You shall never finish. Plus, the king is gonna think you're trying to take over. Nehemiah kept his cool. The God of heaven will give us success. We serve him. So we'll start rebuilding the walls. <laughs> Good luck with that. Nehemiah and the Israelites didn't need luck. They needed God's help. It was true that a few of the Jewish people were builders. Let's see. We've got priests, nobles, goldsmiths, perfume makers, farmers, grape growers, shepherds, any stonemasons. Well, let's get organized. Where he could, Nehemiah assigned each family group to work on a section of the wall closest to their home. Eliashib, you and the other priests will rebuild the sheep gate. Then work on the wall up to the Tower of the Hundred. On it! Hassanah's family, I want you to work on the fish gate, lay its beams, and repair the doors with metal bolts and bars. We've got this! Nehemiah continued to give each family or group a part of the wall to rebuild. Old and young, men and women, they put everything they had to gather the fallen stones and hewing beams. In a short time, the wall began to rise again. Inconceivable! Sanballat and Tobiah were shocked to see the Jews actually making progress. They would mock the work to anyone who would listen. Do those Jews think they can make the wall new in a single day? Preposterous! The stones are all scattered and piled up like garbage. I suppose an itty bitty fox tried to climb up on that excuse for a wall. <laughs> ah! The whole thing would fall down. <laughs> Once again, Nehemiah ignored the heckling. Instead, he prayed as he worked. God, please listen to our prayer. Some people hate us. They're saying bad things about us. Don't hide your eyes from their guilt. With a burst of energy, the people worked even harder until the wall was half as high as it needed to be. Preposterous! Time for some action! Tobiah and Samballot began to plot with the surrounding nations to attack Jerusalem before the wall could be finished. We must set guards, day and night. Even with guards in place, enemies threatened, and the Jews were exhausted. There's rubble everywhere, and our enemies say that no matter where we are, they'll attack! Nehemiah refused to be distracted. He stationed families at the weakest parts of the walls, armed with swords, spears, and bows. Don't be afraid! Fight for your families! From that day, everyone carried their weapons, even as they worked. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, run to join us. God will fight for us. Nehemiah and the Jews worked from the very first light of sunrise until the stars came out at night. At last, the wall itself was finished. It's full height. All the gaps are filled. Yay! Yeah! But we can't rest yet. The entrance gate still must be repaired. Sanballat was furious, but he had another play to make. So he sent a message to Nehemiah, who was working high on the wall. Sanballat says, Come, let's talk with one another. Let's meet in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Oh no, I don't think so. Nehemiah knew perfectly well they were planning to harm him, but he stayed focused on the work and sent his own messenger to Sanballat. Nehemiah says, I am working on a huge project. Why should the work stop while I leave it? Why should I go down and talk with you? Inconceivable! Try again. Five times, Sanballat sent messages. He even threatened to tell the Persian king that Nehemiah was trying to make himself king. Tell Sanballat you're just making that up. Oh, I'll have to send another message. Guy, time for our new strategy. Sanballat made one last desperate attempt. He hired a man named Shemaiah to make Nehemiah look bad with his own people. Nehemiah, some men are coming at night to kill you. Let's go hide in the temple and lock the doors. Nehemiah knew that God had not sent Shemaiah. Should a man like me run away? No. 
I won't go. Once again, Nehemiah saw through the tricks of his enemies. Instead of hiding away and looking foolish, he trusted God and doubled down on the work. On the 52nd day of work, the wall and gates were finished. No! The wall had been finished in record time by a group of ordinary everyday people. It was clear to everyone that God had helped Nehemiah and the Jews stay focused and finish strong. So we see at the beginning of the story that Nehemiah is now in full build, right? He's got all these people that he's getting together to build. And then he gets interrupted by these two people, Sanballat and Tobai. And they want to come and they're kind of making a lot of noise and a lot of ruckus. And they're making fun of them and telling them they're doing all these things wrong. And as we see the story continue, they keep coming back. They keep coming back to distract Nehemiah and they keep saying, well, you can't do this or this isn't going to work or we're going to tear it down. We're going to like not do good things to you if you keep building this wall. And we know that one reason why is because remember the first week when I told you if a city didn't have walls, it was easily overtaken. They wanted to do that. So we see then that Nehemiah doesn't even stop building, but he puts his people in the place and continues to build while they protect the city. And then Sanballat keeps coming and coming and coming and Dubai and keep making fun of him. And Nehemiah doesn't let up. See, he doesn't let them distract him from the work that he knows that needs to get done. If he gets distracted by Sanballat and Tobai coming and just making fun of his work, the walls wouldn't be built and it would be overtaken by an enemy and then all of it would be useless, right? See, Nehemiah had the initiative to keep working and not get distracted. How many times in our life, though, do we get distracted? lot, right? Maybe you're supposed to come home right after school and do homework, but TV sounds like more fun, right? Maybe you're supposed to do the dishes when you get home or after dinner, but you would rather play because you've been working all day. Hmm. See, Nehemiah doesn't let him get himself get distracted. He continued to work on his project until it was done. And then, well, you know what? I'm not going to give it away because I bet Miss Melissa will wrap that up for us. But he doesn't let himself get distracted and things get built and they continue to do what they're supposed to do. So the one thing we want you to remember is stay focused on what needs to get done. Even if you take just a little bit of time, what do you have to accomplish? What task and how can you get it done even if people or TV or toys or friends are distracting you? How can you stay focused and get that thing done? You know what? We're gonna worship with Miss Helena and we're gonna wrap this series or this the Sunday up and Miss Melissa will wrap this series up next week. I hope that you guys enjoy another week. See ya. Worship you. I worship you.